Well, we are back. I know there hasn't been a lot of space between our videos, but uh, me and Cora had to stop for a while because we both got sick. First she got sick, then I got sick. So I'm just getting over it now. Um, so we weren't able to watch and record anything. That's why this month did not go exactly as planned. I was planning on releasing an episode every Monday and every Friday, plus one for Valentine's Day. That didn't quite work out, but here we are. So we're going to still try to get as many out as possible. So what movie are we watching and reviewing today, Cora? Harry Potter 2. What year? Four. Yep. The Goblet of Fire. This one, I can tell you right now, is already one that I'm kind of mixed on. But I'll save that for the review. Do you remember this one? Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? No. No? Do you have, so you have no idea what it's about? Actually, this is seriously all new to me. Oh. Well, what's happened so far in the story of Harry Potter? Remind the audience. Maybe it's been a while since they watched it. Come on, I, you need to do it. You gotta contribute but, here. Why not let you do it? Yeah, but you're doing it now. We gotta see how much you've retained in your first three years at Hogwarts. Sit up, Ravenclaw. So who is Harry Potter? He's the... He's the main character. Boy, who lived? Harry Potter. Yes, but that's what they all keep saying about him, is that he's the boy who lived. What did he survive? What did, what did he live through? The black mysterious <sighs> man, I forgot his name. Did you forget, or are you going with the he who shall not be named? He should not be named. Voldemort. You said it. I tell you. You think Death Eaters are gonna show up now? Yes, I tell you. Um, and what does Harry like to play? The recess game. What they they call it? Wizard Ball. Quidditch. Quidditch. Does he 
what is he, what part does he play in Quidditch? Um, I think he He's in Gryffindor. How could you forget that? It's like the main thing. They say Gryffindor so many freaking times. Five points be taken from Gryffindor. Okay, who's his biggest rival in the school? Who's the who's his arch nemesis? Besides the guy Voldemort. It's a kid who I, who I actually forgot his name. You forgot a lot of things. It's been a while since you watched the Harry Potter series. Okay. It's only been like a week and a half. Anyways, his biggest rival is Malfoy. Okay. Uh, who's his best friend? Hermione and... A orange reddish kid. An orange reddish kid? <laughs> you missed you. I know what to do with you. Very Gryffindor. Another Weasley. Ronald Weasley. Ronald Weasley, what the heck he is. Yeah? Yes. Um, who's the main teacher at Hogwarts? Who's the headmaster? Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Oh, you didn't even forget that, at least. What teacher does Harry hate the most? The same teacher that killed his family. A teacher didn't kill his family. The one who Voldemort wasn't a teacher. You mean who's the, that's what I'm asking you. Which teacher does Harry hate the most? I don't know. I already forgot it. Professor S Snake? Snape. Snape, Snape. They both sound the same, okay? Wait, that should be going to. I don't know. Anyways, uh, so Harry has survived two direct attacks, kind of, on from Voldemort, and Valdi still hasn't been able to kill him. He's tried three times. Um, one of the attempts was from memory, if you remember that. In uh, the last one. If you remember, uh, it turned out that Ron's pet rat that he had in the first two movies turned out to be a person named Peter Pettigrew. Who I guess can shapeshift into rats and orchids? Just, uh, just a rat. He can only turn into a rat. Um, and... He escaped to go rejoin Voldemort, so we'll probably be seeing Peter Pettigrew again, or as most people called him, uh, Wormtail. Wormtail. That was his nickname because he was a rat, and rats have like worm-like tails. Get it? Um. And Sirius Black escaped thanks to Harry Potter. Was Sirius Black innocent or guilty? Guilty! No, he was innocent. Sorry. I mean, innocent. He didn't betray Harry's parents and get him killed. It was Wormtail that did it. And then Wormtail blamed Sirius Black and faked his death so Sirius Black could get arrested and then... Yeah, it's just... Uh, you don't remember any of this? We just watched these movies. How do you not remember? 
Anyways, that brings us to now. So, this year, we're going to return to Hogwarts. There's going to be a big secret. The students are going to find out something huge is going on at the school. And we're going to see if uh, Voldemort's involved yet again. So, alright, sit back, relax as we jump into year four with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Let's a go! So, we just finished Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So why don't you tell the viewers about this. Um, so, Harry, well, of course, Harry goes back to Hogwarts, and, but then we stop, but the movie actually starts, we say, I would probably say a Okay, we start. We we go ahead and see Harry's dream, and sometimes throughout the movie we see it again, and then again, and Did again. Did you notice this was the first movie where we really don't spend any time at the Dursleys? Yeah, and I'm actually happy because I really hate those Dursleys. <sighs> I mean, they're so actually mean to Harry. I mean, if they don't like Harry, like you said, if they don't like Harry, then they should be fine with him going to Hogwarts. But they want to keep him, even though they hate him. Do you know that actually, in the book, there is a big scene with the Dursleys, and it's really, really funny? <laughs> Because uh, Mr. Weasley and Ron and the twins all show up to pick up Harry at the Dursleys for the Quidditch World Cup. And they travel by flu powder. But previously, because of the letters and stuff, 
Mr. Dursley had bricked up his fireplace. So the fireplace still exists, but it's inside the wall. So when the Weasleys show up, they're all four cramped in the chimney. <laughs> and they have to blast their way out of the wall. With their wand? Yeah. But as the regular rule in, in the movie, we can't lose magic out, out, of, out of school. Well, I'm sure they got permission because it was technically Arthur who did it, and Arthur's an adult. So if the ministry came after them, he would say, hey, it was me. I'm the adult. I did it. And I fixed it. <laughs> it's Harry's relatives. They know about magic already, you know. But anyways, yeah, so we were robbed of a really funny scene that's really funny. And, um... Honestly, I'm sorry, but Warner Brothers, they really screwed up with the Harry Potter movies, like, really badly. They should have followed the books very closely, as I've said in probably every other review we've done. But they should have followed the books very closely, and if they, after, like, the second movie, they probably could have had a half of the movie come out in the summer... And half of the movie come out in the winter, or vice versa. Part one comes out in the winter. Part two comes out in the beginning of summer. Maybe they just don't like some parts of the book, so that's why they cut it out and add it on. Yeah, well, they cut out a lot of this book. This yeah. was one of the best books. But, anyways, um, so... We basically pick right up with Harry at Ron's, right? Mm hmm Then what happens? And then, um... They went to the Quidditch Roll Cup? Yeah. And then... Then they go back to Hog... Or, wait, what happens at the World Cup? Um, Something big. Death Eaters. The Death Eaters attack? Mm -hmm. Remember? And they tried to blame Harry? Like, really? Like, Harry Potter's gonna do that? Even if he knew how, Harry Potter is gonna do that. Okay. Even in the book, they thought that they try to blame Harry and they're like, Are you stupid? <laughs> Anyways, um, so finally we're out back to Hogwarts. And what's going on at Hogwarts this year? We, we get some new teachers. And that means we get to see some new faces. Yeah. Splash. But what's the big secret at Hogwarts? Try Wizard Tournament. The Try Wizard Tournament, blah blah blah. And, I forgot. And they make certain rules. What were the rules for the Try Wizard Tournament? Only kids who are 17 can enter, right? Right. Wait, only 17 kids can enter? High or below or just that number? 17 that or older. Then that means it would go higher? Yes. And Harry's only 14, I think, in this movie. Then why the heck did he enter? What? Then why the heck did he enter? He didn't enter. Someone put his name in the goblet. So who gets chosen as the champions for the Tri Wizard Tournament? Harry. Well, aside from him. Victor Crumb. Victor Crumb. 
Victor Crumb, whatever the heck his name is. Uh, you just said it. Victor Crumb. Then there was Flor Delacour. And then who was the Hogwarts champion? Cedric Diggory, remember? God, Corey, you just watched the movie. Were you paying attention to the movie? Yes! I mean, you were sitting there, looked like you were watching it, eating your popsicle and your corn dogs. Can you sit up? Well? So what what happened with the Triwizard Tournament? Come on. Um, so the first competition, they had to go ahead and steal a golden egg from a dragon. Yeah, we didn't get to see how the others did in yeah. this one. But how did Harry do? What did he do? He got ahead. This is you. This is the dragon. And <laughs> so Harry goes in and walks chase through the air. And then the dragon comes and tries to get Harry. Then Hayami comes, whoever her name is. Hermione. Hermione. And helps Harry out. How does she help Harry out? I, he wasn't allowed help. No one was in there but him. They were all watching. She was talking slash yelling because <coughs> she <coughs> No, he used his wand to summon his broomstick. Yeah, but who got the idea? Uh, Mad Eye Moody. Speaking of that, we haven't talked about Mad Eye yet. So uh, that's the new teacher we got this year for Defense Against the Dark Arts, right? Mm -hmm. And what do you think? What do you think of Mad Eye Moody at first? He is very crazy. But he turned Malfoy into a into a ferret. And Made him dance in the air. Then he put him down the front of Goyle's pants. And then that's when I got it to get my suspicious bad guy six. Yeah. Because what the heck? Well, Hogwarts teacher break the rules. Well, I mean, Malfoy was going to throw a spell at Harry behind Harry's back. Yeah, but the teacher also worked a rule. Um, or just bent it. <laughs> bent it. Okay, well, I mean. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. But that happens in the book, too, so. That's actually a really good scene. I like that scene. It's supposed to make you endear on Mad Eye Moody because he, yes, he's crazy, but at that point he's kind of a good guy. But anyways, moving on. Okay. So then, what's so Harry wins and they all won their egg. And what what's so special about this egg? What does it tell them? It screams. It 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 tells you put it on the water. Yeah. And you have to go on the water with it to be able to, to hear what it says. And trust me, if I were Harry, I probably would do that because I can't even breathe on the water for long. And that will come to the second competition. Well, that's why. And if I was Harry again, I would probably lose right away. Because, like I said, I cannot breathe underwater for long. Well, they got magic to help them. But I, but I will not eat that the suskate thing. Because it looks so suskate. And why the heck would I eat it? 
It looks dusty. Because it's going to allow you to breathe underwater for an hour. But I wanted to talk. But before, wait, 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 wait. Before we continue on, I wanted to talk about something that you kept having comments about during the movie. So, uh, who shows up while Harry's trying to figure out the egg? We get a familiar face from a previous movie. Who is that? Doctor Who? No. Although she was on Doctor Who, yes. She was in an episode. Okay, Hermione? No. I said a familiar face. Meaning not somebody who's in every movie. I don't know. I, I forgot her name. I don't even know who her name is. Moaning Myrtle. Moaning Myrtle. The ghost? Wait, do you mean the ghost that seriously went into the best to push him down? Yes! <laughs> you had plenty to say during the movie about it. You know that... You know that scene was very un for me, right? Why was it uncomfortable? She, she's seriously in the water. In, but she's her? a ghost. When he's naked? Well, I don't know if he was naked. He might have had swimming trunks on. I sure about that. I want to see why he wouldn't. Are you sure? I don't know. There was bubbles. Couldn't see anything. But I'm sure they had the actor wearing some kind of swimming trunks or underwear or something. Hopefully because I do not want to see the main character in a bath with a ghost or someone in it too. Anyways. <laughs> I, I think you found that scene kind of funny too because I heard you laughing a little bit. No. Yeah. No. So anyways, uh, they have to go and do what? What does he do with the, in the lake? He goes ahead and eat that thingy. He goes ahead and go through all the obstacles. And he doesn't just say Well, who what? gave him the plant? Neville! Neville! Jeez. You know, I'm going to have an interesting story for you about Neville Longbottom as we get close to the end. Since you haven't read the books yet. Anyways. So. Neville gives him the plant. He eats the plant while he's under... Right before he goes under the water. And what does Neville think when Harry doesn't come back up at first? He's dead. He's like, I killed Harry Potter. That would have sucked for Voldemort, huh? Yep. Never would have been brought back. If that had happened. Anyways... So, he goes through the water, and what does he find at the end? Some of his friends. Ron, Hermione, Cho Chang, Flor's sister. And then he doesn't just save one. And then he doesn't just save his friends. He saves the other two. Yeah. And if... And even though that he was in last place, the coach decided to move him into second place. And then the one who was in second place was out in third place, and the one who was in first place was in first place. Do you think that that is fair? Since Harry would have technically been in first place, had he have just got Ron and gone? No, he would have been in first. If he had just grabbed Ron and left, 
He made it there first. He would have won in first place. But he didn't go. He was trying to make sure the others got out okay. And he stayed, which allowed Cedric to come along. And De and uh, Crumb to come along. And then Flora was disqualified because she gave up right away with the Grindelows. Those little octopus thingies. So... Harry saved the other two, and that's what dropped him down to third place. But because he had stayed, even though he would have been in first place, and he's now in third place because he didn't want to give up on those others, they bumped him up to at least second place. So do you think that's fair? A little bit. Okay. Anyways, so... After that, what have what big thing happens next? Music again. The dance. The dance. And they all have to. The boys have to ask the girls out, right? Yes, which is kind of uncomfortable. Don't ask why. Well, I mean, is it more uncomfortable for, you think, the boys or for the girls who are getting asked out? The boys. You think it's more uncomfortable for the boys? Are you going to make it hard for a boy to ask you out? No, because of my kids. They're huh? Ask, no, because of my kids. Do I ask why? Well, you can have kids when you're older, not now. <laughs> I know! But anyways, don't eat that. That's been sitting in there. Throw it away. Yes. yes, throw it away. Over here. Toss it. So anyways, who does Hermione end up going to the ball with? Some other kid. I forgot his name. We've said his name like five times. Victor. Victor. Crumb. Crumb. Duck, duck, crumb. 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 And who does Neville go to the ball with? Um. Ginny. Ginny. Ron's sister. Ron's sister. Who has a crush on Harry. Or at least she did in the first, or well, technically the second and third. Anyways, continuing on. Um, so, my biggest thing, and I pointed this out in a previous video, is, you know, J.K. Rowling has gone out of her way to say that she didn't like pairing Ron and Hermione together at the end when all is said and done. That she didn't think that they are a good couple. However, I totally disagree because I think they're a perfect couple together. And we've seen a lot of instances already where they have a strong bond as a couple. I mean, in this movie, you, I'm even sure as a child, couldn't you tell Ron was jealous? Maybe. That he was upset that Hermione went with Crumb over him? Yeah, a little bit. But, you know. And the jealousy, as you'll see soon enough, uh, goes both ways. <laughs> so, I've already said a lot about how I feel on this topic, but maybe in a future video I'll r briefly go through it again. But just really pay attention to that part of this movie because that really does solidify why they are such a good couple. And I'll point out all the little tiny details as we reach the end 
But anyways, so now we're moving on to the third task, and the third task was what? A maze. That if you find a trophy, it teleports you to a Dumbledore is summon. Dumbledore? Wait, no, not Dumbledore, the one that who shall not be named. Voldemort? I thought you'd say his name. Or Tom Riddle. Yeah, you say his name. Which one? Voldemort or Tom Riddle? The one who shall not be named! The one who shall not be named! All those are his names. His full name is uh, Tom or Volo Riddle. I said the one who shall not be and if you rearrange it, it says, spells out, I am Lord Voldemort. We saw that in Chamber of Secrets. Where he wrote out his name in fire in the air. And then he switched his wand and it rearranged the letters. Anyways, moving on. So, who gets to the cup? Um, No, Cho Chang. Cho Chang. Cho Chang went out with Cedric. Anyways, so they get taken to where? Where it's just said the place. What? The grave. <laughs> Okay, just come on. The graveyard? Yes! Alright. And then what happens at the graveyard? One of them died. Of course on Harry. But then Harry almost died. And then... The, but... You know, let's go to the pot. But the white slash human white tail... No, long tail... Goes ahead... And kills one of them, and then takes a, a little bit of Harry's blood, like I believe this much, just to drop. Maybe you would to say, um, cuts off his hand, drops it in Voldemort, chants a spell, and Voldemort is back. Yep. Can you quit playing with okay. things? So Voldemort's back. He Just goes, and what is he? What's the first thing Voldemort does? He summons his Death Eaters. And who's one of the Death Eaters? We see another familiar face at this point. Who do we see? Malfoy's father. Malfoy's father. Lucius. <laughs> then what happens? Come on, come on, it's come on, come on, come on. And then, and then the one who shall not be named tries to... I'm gonna say Voldemort, jeez. Oh my god, we're not allowed to say his name. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Voldemort. Voldemort tries to kill Harry, but then his parents and then the ones who died by Voldemort goes ahead and helps he survive. And then he brings the dead body with him. And then he gets to the trophy and gets back to Hogwarts. And then the, the party begins while Harry's crying and then the party slowly stops as when everybody noticed Harry crying. And then Harry says he's back, Voldemort's back. And, and then the parent of him cried 
Not Harry, of course. Not Harry's parents. The one's dead parents. And then. And then. That Harry was, gets taken off by Mad Eye Moody. Yes, right? But that part was really hard working. That made me sad. As heck. That made me sad as bloody. Hell. That made me sad as everything. Well, real quick, just a little tidbit of information from the books, since Daddy has read the books. Um, <coughs> we actually were supposed to have seen Cedric Diggory before in the movies. He was in the game against Hufflepuff when Harry's broom got destroyed. Yeah, so he was in that one when... Uh, Hufflepuff one. There was actually talk of it in the beginning of this book about that bit from a previous book. But anyways, continue on. So, Mad-Eye Moody takes Harry to his office and what happens? Um, then Mad-Eye Moody. 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 Like, you're making me moody. Come on. Okay. Here. And then, and then me moody tries to kill Harry. But, no, you could just explain West. No, come on, you're doing good. You could just what happens when he tries to kill Harry? Which teacher? Voldemort. Wait, no! Why do you keep getting Dumbledore and Voldemort mixed up? They They're like two way different characters. They start with V! No. Voldemort starts with a V. Dumbledore starts with a D. What sounds On like two opposite ends yeah. of the Dumbledore. alphabet. Door. Dumbledore. Dumbledore! So what does he do? He barges in? Yes! And what happens? He goes ahead and puts his his wand on Manny Moo's neck. Mad Eye's neck. Yeah, neck. And then he asks where is Harry? It didn't open. No, yes. Where is Alistair, the real Alistair? Okay. And then. And then. That's Mad Eye Moody's first name. His real name was Alistair Moody. Anyway, so to finish up, Alistair Moody. Um, turns out to be an imposter. Dumbledore barges in and um, confronts him. And it, who is Alistair Moody really? Um, the Voldemort's kid. But no. Where do you know? The act, where do you know that actor from? The one he turns into. Doctor Who! Thank you. You finally get to say it. I was letting you do the reveal that it was David Tennant from Doctor Who. Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Who! <laughs> You're okay. weird. There's actually a lot of characters from Doctor Who, or from the Harry Potter I movies. Know. That were in Doctor Who at some point. Bye. A lot. Bye. So anyways. Um, so then they find the real Alistair. And that's it. Basically everybody goes home. There's a big sad speech at the end from Dumbledore. About the loss of Cedric. And the return of Voldemort. And of course. You know you'll find out more in the next movie. But anyway, so, did you have a favorite part of this movie, Cora? Um, 
No. <laughs> Actually, I kind of don't know what was my favorite part. Yeah. Like I said, I'd have to honestly say my favorite part is the ferret scene with Malfoy and Mad-Eye Moody. One of the things that really bugs me the most is probably the fact that this guy was so good at pretending to be Mad-Eye Moody that nobody noticed. Yet it makes no sense how he would know this much about Moody. Even in the book, that never made any sense to me. Because he never spent any time with Mad-Eye Moody. Enough to know how to act like him. And just acting crazy is not enough. Because even Dumbledore would have said, Oh, no, no. This is beyond Mad-Eye. He would never do this. Or he would never do that. He would never pull this kind of stun. You know, so, I mean, they had to be just the right kind of crazy to match up, even though they were on different sides. But anyways, uh, did you have a favorite character? Of course, Harry Potter. Harry Potter again? No new characters really stood out to you? Yeah. Mine again, Mad-Eye Moody. Uh, I really like... The introduction of his character. I think he's a good character going forward. Although it gets really weird going forward. Because, you know, like Harry, this is the Mad-Eye Moody. Like, the Mad-Eye Moody you had through all of this movie right up until the end there. Is basically how he continues to act in future movies. When you see him. Even though he gets a much smaller role in the movies going forward. And it's just like, oh, well this was his time to shine. So I really like him in this one for that reason. But he's basically the same character even though he's supposed to be a different person altogether. So, um, Alright, well we're going to take a quick break. Sorry about the cut there. The camera automatically turned off for some reason. So, we'll be right back after this quick break. Bye! Hello there. I promise we'll get right back to the video shortly. I just wanted to say that many writers, YouTubers, readers, and gamers often talk about one thing that they all share in common, and that is drinking coffee. And perhaps you're tired of going out and ordering expensive high-end coffees and cappuccinos from huge corporations and are looking for a way to have that same or better coffee brewed right in your own home. So I want to ask that you consider trying Coffee Brand Coffee. You can order from an array of different blends that will be delivered right to your door. And if coffee is not your thing, they also have teas, cocos, and chocolates. Why am I doing this, you may ask? Well, for a long time now, I have been a fan of a channel called The Quartery, which is constantly reporting on the news, and the head of the channel, Jeremy, has worked really hard for his viewers over the time I've watched this channel. He has done so much helping out others and smaller channels, working hard to make several videos a day, which I can tell you, does take quite a good amount of work. And recently, he started his own coffee company. So if you're willing to try and change to a better coffee, tea, or K-cup, because you need that sweet caffeine fix, to get you through writing that next novel, reading that next book, playing that new video game long into the late hours of the night, or starting off early in the morning for a long live stream, then head over to the website for Coffee Brand Coffee, or check out the channel The Quartering and see what delicious specials they have going on.
For thousands of years, the world has been protected by the Guardian of Light, or as he is more commonly known, Santa Claus. Over the centuries, factors such as fear and prejudice, greed and jealousy, misunderstandings, betrayal and war have segregated most humans from the magical world of elves, fairies, wizards, and the like. This has resulted in many misconceptions and generalizations of the true nature of Santa and his world. This six-book series by Sean Connaughton begins as the current of a long series of guardians is murdered by a group of monstrous enemies recently escaped from an enchanted South Pole prison. These creatures are loyal to the darkness, an evil force determined to exterminate the light in order to enslave all creatures of the world. Shane Connor, an average young man, suddenly finds himself being trained as the new guardian. As he adapts to his new life among fantastic creatures, he goes on an adventurous quest with a legendary wizard for the ultimate weapon to use against the darkness, and faces murderous enemies like Rasputin, Morgana Le Fay, Krampus, and many more. Along with his best friend, Joe Gomez, Shane encounters politics, history, mysterious murders, new loves, his own hidden past, and racial dynamics among the fantasy races that turn out to be all too real. Their adventures reveal the true nature of the world and challenge the current state of how all races interact. This series expertly melds myths, legends, history, faiths, folklore, and secret societies into a fascinating, cohesive, comprehensive world of wonder and magic. From Atlantis to Olympus, from Hades to the moon, and from broomstick races to Christmas deadlines, join the new Santa Claus on his amazing journey. But beware! Will Shane's quest achieve his ultimate goal of destroying the darkness and preserving the light of the world? Or is he actually playing right into a plot by dark forces that will result in his, and our, ultimate doom? So make your list and check it twice for the Guardian of Light book series. Download your audiobook or ebook today from Audible, Amazon, or iTunes. All right, so, Cora. Yes? Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate this Harry Potter movie? A 6 out of 10. A 6 out of 10. I've been thinking about it during the movie. Yeah? That's why I, that's why I, have, I have been mostly forgetting most of the scenes. And well, you should, th you should just watch the movie. And pay attention to what's going on. I think about your score after while we're taught recapping the movie. That's when you should be thinking about what you want to score the movie. Anyways, we're going to move on. This has already been a long video. But anyways, for me, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would... Oh, I, I mean, I'm so conflicted because I have read the book. And I've seen the movies, and I know it's coming, and I know it was missing from the book, so it's like, it's all confusing, but just this movie on its own, I'm going to have to go with a 7 out of 10. This is one of my more favorite movies, but there is so much cut out. That it almost kills me to have to score it lower. Because it could have been such a better movie. So. But that has been our ranking for. Or our review. Of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Join us next time as we move into the fifth year at Hogwarts. And the Order of the Phoenix. Which. I'm going to predict. Cora is going to give that one a very low score. Mostly because it has the worst and yet best villain in all of Harry Potter. What if I told you, Cora, that Voldemort is not the worst villain in Harry Potter? That there's somebody worse than Voldemort? Would you believe me? <laughs> Alright. Well, we'll find out next time. We'll see if I'm right. If she goes lower, than a 6. Alright. So, thank you all for watching. Be sure to... Like, comment, subscribe! And, uh... 
just a little recap real quick um, every time I get a new set of 10 subscribers I give away free digital codes for movies so if you want a chance make sure you're subscribed make sure to click that notification bell so you're notified the second a new video goes up because you never know when we are going to hit that next set of 10 and there might be a free movie code in the next video so definitely make sure to click those notification bells double triple just click it a bunch of times to to randomly you know but definitely make sure you hit the subscribe first so you can be notified all right we'll see y'all the next one